Hello and welcome to Printtech, the Prince Technology Show. Ever since its launch in late 2022, ChatGPT has taken the internet by storm. Now comes its latest version, GPT-4. That AI has matured is now undisputed. But does this new version up the game? To answer that and much more, we have with us the Prince Tech expert Sahil Mohan Gupta. Welcome, Sahil. Welcome once again to the print. Thanks. Before we get into the latest version of uh, GPT-4, uh, if you could please uh, brief our viewers, our listeners, what exactly is GPT? What is the big deal about it? A little bit of backstory, how it came into existence, about the firm that's uh, riding it, and, uh, and 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 what is generative AI? Yes. So uh, GPT stands for generative pre-trained transformer so so that is uh, a mouthful it's a little hard to uh, remember but in late uh, 2022 in december basically gpt 3.5 came out and uh, this is something that has been developed by a company called open ai which famously actually has been co-founded by elon musk he poured around 100 million dollars into uh, into it originally of his own money not tesla not uh, spacex um, much before he acquired twitter and all but uh, funny enough uh, elon is not associated with open ai anymore so generative ai is basically the next phase of all of these uh, assistants that we have been seeing since the iPhone 4S came out, we had Siri, then we had the Google Assistant, then we had Alexa on Amazon Echo, we had Cortana, Microsoft used to have Cortana out there, and more recently on Samsung's phones, there's something called Bixby. But these assistants were basically very rudimentary. You could tell him, hey Siri, turn on the alarm. You could just make very basic queries and it wasn't very all of them weren't very intelligent siri arguably was the dumbest of the lot uh, but now uh, with uh, this computational capability increasing more data being gathered we have got a new sphere of ai called generative ai which can um, create things it's creative it's uh, inventive uh, so now chat gpt in december 22 and since now has become the fastest uh, app to a million users in history uh, beaten even tiktok uh, and essentially it's like a tool that you can uh, tell it a certain instruction and uh, and it will uh, deliver content and we will understand context basic rules the fundamentals are the same as original siri google assistant and all of that it's just that it is 1000x smarter probably more times than that and it understands everything right so would it be correct to say that uh, finally uh, something that we saw in the movies uh, like the space odyssey Star Trek uh, yes. and uh, something that has been predicted for so for long and then AI promised a lot of stuff I think I mean this is for me this is my understanding I think finally it's delivering can we say that it is starting to deliver and uh, it is uh, actually it, the funny thing about this is that people probably thought this was still three four five years away 26 27 this would happen and suddenly in December when chat GPT 3.5 came out uh, then it was already on a very high level and then now GPT-4 has come out. Yeah, I mean, in, in a span of just four months after creating news across the world, uh, we have the latest version, yeah. that's GPT-4. What is the buzz around that? Now, uh, Sam Altman, the CEO and co-founder of OpenAI said that they've had GPT-4 running uh, internally since August last year. So th they were probably testing it for a while. And then um, last month, uh, Microsoft announced uh, the Bing uh, powered by GPT so at that time there was no GPT-4 so many people assumed that it is running a new version of GPT which now Microsoft has confirmed is uh, uh, that Bing is running GPT-4 uh, customized by it uh, for its search algorithm so now GPT-4 if 
in a nutshell it does less disinformation it's smarter it can write way more text and generally can do more a great example of something that uh, i personally sh saw and it's a capability as a person i don't have is that um, there was a developer on twitter who basically who knows how to write in swift which is basically how you write apps for the iphone and um, gave instructions to gpt4 to create an app that would recommend you five new movies every day on netflix and amazon prime and gpt4 did all the coding for it and uh, and it works and there's an app out there right uh, so but uh, sahil how do you explain this uh, so fast a transition uh you you earlier you mentioned that uh, a, people were not uh, hoping it something like this before 26 27 and then this came towards the end of last year and then nine four, four months we have an update which is even better but i was reading it somewhere and i and i and I actually would like to quote uh, this person jan leek at open ai who is an ml researcher and alignment team lead at the ai company he in one of the articles uh, where he's quoted he admits that they were taken aback by the response that gpt brought does this not mean that internally even they were not aware of the kind of response they would get uh, does it mean that there is a lot that has already been developed yet people deploying it do not know their capabilities because again a update a big update in just 4 months in a field that was kind of starting to you know uh, not move so fast yeah. how do you see that i mean uh, the biggest testament to how quickly this has happened is that it has taken google aback and google has been the quintessential ai company for so many years uh, remember in 2017 when they announced the google duplex which could basically hum mimic the human voice and could take on uh, spam calls or just make an appointment for you at the parlor or do a hotel booking for you uh, it received such negative feedback uh, in 2017 and around about the same time they announced lambda also which now is the basis for google bard which is the chat gpt competitor by google google wasn't expecting this to happen and now suddenly because chat gpt has taken over uh, people perceive that uh, google's technology is actually inferior to it and now bing because of microsoft's overall 11 billion dollar investment in open ai kind of has t kind of turned the tables on google search which it has been trying to beat for the last 20 years uh I think the bigger thing is that uh, they have figured out the business model around it. Um, when ChatGPT came out um, as like a thing that anyone could use in December, it was a free for all tool. But the amount of usage, uh, I mean, people are using ChatGPT across offices. They are not telling their bosses that they are using it, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so OpenAI was forced to make a, uh, make a. paid tier which would give you instant responses because it was taking up so much cloud computing resources and now since uh, there is a paid tier like you can have gpt plus chat gpt plus uh, right now in india which is based on gpt4 for 20 dollars a month well well sahil if you say that then uh, it also kind of accepting the fact that uh, not all the traffic that has uh, generated around chat gpt in last 4 5 months is not all enthusiastic uh, uh, which is just want to go there and try out what yes. this this is not just curiosity driven it also looks like that there is a need for it yes and so how do you see the impact on those uh, those kind of jobs especially in content writing i mean our jobs uh, for example uh, like before starting this i i showed you an example of uh, this uh, other ai which uh, so i use an application called notion uh, which is uh, run by the ex uh, linkedin india head akshay kothari so it's in uh, it's incorporated the anthropic ai now anthropic is a company in which google has put 300 million dollars in it in response to microsoft's investment in open ai and uh, 
it's also a company that's formed by ex open ai uh, employees and they have got a new assistant called cloud oh cloud a i don't know exactly how to pronounce it but uh, it can i can tell it to write an article on chat gpt it will instantly write that it will summarize my notes it's basically a workspace of kind of a kind uh, so there is definite need for it but what people are figuring out is that it makes you more efficient right the menial the rudimentary tasks that uh, one used to do and one would be like why do i have to do this right. this is like i'm over qualified for this you know right. say even writing uh, like if i have to write a social media post i don't want to really write it Absolutely. right that's too much work right it's uh, it's not work that you enjoy doing and now the ai can do it right so uh, i mean if this de- this uh, demand that's coming out uh, w- would that be able to drive uh, the big churning the next big churning in silicon valley or this is, is it already happening so when uh, microsoft's uh, ceo satya nadella recently showed off uh, gpt4 tech being infused in of uh, microsoft 365 which is basically their office suite which includes word excel powerpoint uh, dynamics outlook and all of these apps apps that we all have been using for what ever since we have come out of school uh, he said he noted that these main inflection points keep happening once in a generation and he noted that the iphone was an inflection point in the mid 2000s so and this is probably the next big one so we are going to see a, a tech rivalry uh, that's that something of sorts we saw maybe two decades back yes or three decades back it, microsoft lost the war on mobile and search it was beaten in search by google and on mobile it was beaten by google and apple both uh this is its way to come back because when they announced uh, the gpt infused bing google has basic monopoly over search if microsoft is even able to shave off 2 or 3% over that market share that's billions of dollars worth of money off google's books into microsoft's books and that investment alone for that is worth it and imagine what will happen when uh, office when everyone can use this tech in office right so and uh, my my last and final question to you sahil uh, uh, can we finally say that uh, chat gpt has bridged that uh, gap that was there for really long uh, Uh, between the promise that uh, artificial intelligence made and and the delivery and how do you see things panning out in future i mean we are still at a very early stage of this technology there are lots of safety concerns particularly when you talk about content writing it does throw up a lot of misinformation still like 40% less than gpt 3.5 but still it does and when google's bard comes out when they showcased google bard it uh, in the keynote itself it had got something wrong and uh, that resulted in alphabet's uh, market cap losing billions of dollars mm-hmm. so uh, we are at a very early stage and we have to be very careful these companies have to be very responsible and careful with the way they roll out this technology because it's a tool in the wrong hands it can do a lot of damage uh, we have seen that before with social media uh, and uh, this is going to be even more powerful than social media but it is starting to do things it is giving you and i and everyone who is watching this video a capability that we did not have for example i cannot imagine like if i have to develop a website of my own i can do it right now right so uh, do you think uh, uh, microsoft has finally got uh, that piece of technology that domain it was looking uh, for for really long Uh, to get ahead of the curve when it comes to competing with the googles yeah. and, and 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 the apples they have they have uh, it's very important to remember that satya microsoft ceo was one of the 
he leads behind Bing and then he became and Bing's infrastructure is basically the Microsoft cloud. He built that cloud business, which is a very solid number two to AWS. Uh, so he's been trying to beat Google. Uh, for 15 years a very interesting anecdote in his uh, video interview with the verge he said that he wants google to dance and he wants the world to know that microsoft was the one who made google dance right. and clearly google is dancing they're scrambling right, right. sundar pichai has brought in uh, larry page and sergey brin out of retirement literally and Sergey Brin did his first code check at Google in years. Right. It's caused a huge red alert at right. the. And I'm sure that's something that uh, our regular readers of the print uh, must have uh, uh, seen because uh, Sahil's uh, latest column uh, was on that very topic. And um, Sahil, before we uh, let you go, uh, what else to expect in uh, in, in in next few uh, episodes of uh, Print Tech and and for your column? Okay, so. Uh, by the time this video goes out, uh, there would be already a column around uh, Galaxy Book 3 and also the Nothing uh, Ear 2 earphones. Uh, but more than that, I'm going to be writing a column on uh, on our uh, f photography, uh, the photography that we do with our smartphones because our f smartphones are also using a lot of AI. Are the photos that we are clicking, are they real photos? So I'm going to be writing something around that topic and that's i'm a little excited about that well that's that's uh, what we have got for you in uh, print tech and uh, we look forward to that there's ai happening there as well yeah, yeah. so that was uh, our special episode on uh, chat gpt uh, thank you for watching